So I made booleans look real easy because I didn't really do much with them. But booleans can be a big pain in the butt sometimes, and I'll show you why. So I'm going to take these and shift D them. And I'm going to take this and um, maybe take a face. and choose to flip the normal on it. So I'm just going to flip the direction of this. Now, I wouldn't be able to see this unless I hit N on the keyboard and then go down to display and show back face culling. So now you can see that <laughs> this is clear at the bottom. It's, it's not clear. Alright. Now, I'll take one of these and I'll show you how to separate these. So if you click on one, hit L, you can go mesh, vertices, separate, selection, or P on the keyboard. Now you can grab that single one and go object, transform, origin to geometry. That just centers that origin up. seven on a number pad. I'm just going to put it in line with that. And let's say I wanted to cut a hole in the middle of this weird uh, mesh with the normal and flipped on the other side. So let's do that. So this is still called buttonhole, I do believe. This is called buttonholes 0.001. So I'm just going to grab this mesh and do a boolean with it. Boolean. I'll choose difference and I'll use buttonholes 001. Whoa. I'll hit apply just to show you what happens. Okay, check that out. Isn't that weird? So instead of a hole, it made a hole on one side and then on the other side it made this inverted peg. So that's what happens you got to really watch your normals, what direction they're in, and if they're in the wrong direction, it's going to have some really funky results. So that's one thing that happens all the time. And, that's, and how you fix that is you just make sure you flip the normal before you go to do the Boolean operation. If you see strange results, just don't apply it to the model and you'll be alright. Okay, one last thing. So by doing a Boolean operation, you could cause some damage to the mesh and it could have some strange results on 3D printing. So you have to run it through a service in order to repair it. Now there's two different ways to do this. You could go download a, a program called NetFab Studio. Okay, NetFab Studio. That's an awesome program and it has a very basic version. In fact, as a student, I want you to go download that. Put it on your computer and you can see it pops up with this until you buy the program. You have to wait like so many seconds and then I can hit later. Now this is for educational purposes only. You know, I, I don't, I'm not going to be purchasing this right off the bat, but um, later on down the road we can explore maybe getting a whole lab of this. But for right now, let's use the basics. Projects, open. Let's go to desktop and choose button and hit open. You see this exclamation point? It's already telling me that there's a problem with the mesh. But if you click on it with the left mouse, go to the little repair icon, you'll see that these little red lines, those are what the problem is. These are called, these are back faced or there's another one, there's another term to it too, but um, let's just say it's one face laying on top of the other face perfectly in the same plane. To get rid of that, you can get to automatic repair and hit execute. And then apply repair and hit yes. It doesn't look like it did much, but it did repair that. Now if you right click, you can export part as still. 
and you can put it right over the top of button. I'm just going to put it down here and say button fixed. It'll pop up with this and saying, hey, you have some other stuff. Do you want to repair that? So it's really user friendly. It comes in handy. It's like a last ditch effort to help you. So you can hit repair and export. So I might have missed something. It program catches it. There's another way to do this. Well, two different ways you can do this. So let's look at both. Okay, type in NetFab in Google, and you can go to netfab.com. You can go to services and say NetFab Cloud Services. This is another, this is a free variation of it. You can hit browse, browse it out to button fixed or button because this one's not fixed. This you have to have a valid email address that you can check. So there you go. I'm going to use millimeters and accept. So if you go check your email, uh, and I'm not going to do that via video because I don't want to display my email, but you'll find that there's a download for that. The last one that you can do to kind of repair this, sometimes you can go like this, go to vertex, go to Z, grab all the vertices, hit Z again, and zoom in on an area that's highly dense in vertices and go like this. Remove doubles. Now sometimes it'll say 10 vertices removed and you can bump this up just a little bit. But the minute that it starts to get to the point where you lose uh, some kind of resolution on the mesh, let's say that instead of these being round it starts getting octagonal Okay, you don't want that like that. So you want to do it within reason and you don't want to lose a whole lot of detail. So make sure that if you do do that option that you haven't lost anything. But <clears throat> that's a good way to get rid of degenerate vertices and everything else. Now if you ran that through NetFab, it should be okay. But uh, that's another way to do it. All right, so there's a few ways to repair meshes. I would highly suggest NetFab Studio over anything and watch those uh, flipped normals. All right, now go print your button. Enjoy. And then come back, we'll look at the results.